Hey guys, it's Matt again. It's been uh, about three days since we uh, added the yeast and started our brew. It's uh, it's still bubbling, but it's like you gotta sit and stare at it a while for to see it bubble. So that means it's pretty much done fermenting. So I'm gonna rack it off of the sediment and put it into a secondary. I've already sanitized all the equipment, so at this point I think that pretty much goes without saying. I'm going to put it in my, my spigot, so that way when I bottle it tomorrow, I won't be bottling off a of sediment. Some people don't care about that, but I do. I don't like to bottle off a of sediment. So for one, we're going to take this lid off, which is sometimes hard to get off. I don't know if I can use my tool for this or not. Not this kind of barrel. That doesn't work. I'm just gonna have to whip it off. Now, one of your first things that you might want to try is to smell your brew. And I'm gonna tell you not to do that because if you know, understand why the bubbler is bubbling, is because. Like I said, the yeast is eating the sugar and producing alcohol and CO2. Even though you can't see it, there's a layer of CO2 on top of this beer. And if you stick your head down there and you sniff, it'll take your breath away and you could pass out. So if you want to smell it, put your head up here and smell it. Don't stick your face down there. You know, many people may think this is unsanitary, but I've been doing it this for, way for a while and I've never had a problem. Stick your racking cane in there, suck on it until you get a siphon, and then put it in there. Just like that. And let it go. So now we have beer, but it's flat beer. And also, make sure your spigot, test it before you put beer in it when you're sanitizing <laughs> to make sure it's in the off position. I've never done it, but I can imagine if your spigot is on and you start racking your beer, it's going to go right onto the floor. And this is a boring process. You'll notice that when I made my wine videos I said this is the most boring part about making wine. But all we really have left to do is I mean tomorrow I'm gonna find my beer bottles there somewhere about I'd say about anywhere from 48 to 53 bottles sometimes you'll get like 51 and a half or something and uh, find my beer bottles, make sure they're all rinsed out, uh, and uh, sanitize them, uh, same way I did with the wine in my videos. Fill up your bucket, full of your sanitizer solution, dunk the bottles in there, leave them sit there for a minute, and then uh, we're going to be putting some priming sugar, or you, you, know, you can use corn sugar, and uh, we're gonna boil a little water, I mean, just a small amount, just enough to dissolve some sugar in. And uh, so we're gonna take like I have to check the measurements, but I think it's a third or a, or a half cup of corn sugar. Dissolve it in the boiling water. We're gonna dump it in the brew, stir it real well, and then start about the bottling process. And that's because right now it's flat beer, and that's how you get your carbonation is by adding sugar and it ferments in the bottle and so instead of going through the bubbler it's actually be going up through the liquid and carbonating the beer and because of that because we have sediment and the stuff around the side they call krausen but I just call it foam um, but on the bottom there's sediment so you'll actually get a little bit of sediment on the on the bottom of each bottle 
And uh, some people, when they pour the beer, they try to leave behind that sediment. Other people just pour it in and drink it. It doesn't matter. I'm one of the ones that pour it in and drink it. It doesn't matter because I think it actually adds to the flavor of the beer. Um, some people look, look at it and they go, ew, but it's really nothing. It's dead yeast. It's not going to hurt you. It's not going to kill you. It's just the way it is. The only way you could avoid that is by kegging. And kegging, you're taking, you know, the beer. Like today, you'd be instead of racking it into a bucket for bottling, you'd be racking it into a sanitized keg, hooking up all your all your uh, you got one valve for the beer and one that goes to the tap and one valve that goes to the CO2 tank and uh, you crank up the CO2 on it I forget the pounds of pressure but it'll be uh, and in like three days you'll have drinkable carbonated beer the more pressure the more carbonated it'll be now there are tricks you can start drinking it right away if you have a kegerator somewhere to keep it cold, what you can do is crank up the CO2 past what level you'll normally keep it at and sit there and then shake the keg back and forth for like 20 minutes or so. And that should carbonate it enough for you to actually start drinking it right away. So from the time you start brewing this, if you're kegging, you can be brewing and drinking beer within about three to four days if it ferments fast, which this fermented pretty fast. Now we're getting near the bottom, we wanna, not too far near the bottom, but I'm just gonna, I just tilt, slowly tilt the bucket so that way you're gonna leave behind most of the sediment. Because if you tilt it too fast and you shake it up and swish it, all that sediment will get mixed up in the beer and then you'll just be transferring the sediment to the next bucket, which you don't really want to do. Unless you like drinking lots of sediment, but that's up to you. But other than that, I mean, that's that's pretty much all there is to brewing beards. Uh, total time investment, maybe four hours. I mean, brewing the beer takes a while, you know, half, half hour to an hour once you get it boiling. And then, you know, sanitizing equipment, cleaning up afterwards. Um, adding the yeast and watching it ferment is n no time wasted at all and then doing this takes what 10 minutes or so maybe less and the bottling and the sanitizing and all that stuff maybe takes an hour hour and a half so I mean you're really only looking at three to four hours of your time and 20 bucks gets you two cases of beer now this is an Irish stout and Guinness is also an Irish stout and in our liquor stores, you can buy four cans of Guinness for what was it nine dollars now? I mean, and here you're getting two cases of Irish Stout for twenty bucks. I mean, it's not as refined as Guinness. It's probably not as good as Guinness. I don't remember what the Cooper's Irish Stout tastes like, but it's pretty good beer. It's not the best, but I love homebrew. And once you've had a few different home brews, you'll really start to know the difference between a regular, like, American beer or imported beer and a home brew. It's got a different kind of taste, a different kind of aroma, a different kind of mouth feel. And I really enjoy it. I'll drink any kind of home brew. I actually had a, my buddy brewed home brew, and he stopped for a long time. And, uh... He actually had some homebrew that was had been sitting in his house for about four years and we tried it and it wasn't bad wasn't bad at all now see right here I'm gonna get near the end here I'm just gonna wait get as much as I can and the sediment starts coming up and we're done and you leave that stuff behind that's that uh, milky dead yeast and everything chocolate looking stuff just leave that behind pull out our hose here make sure it's empty unless you want to spill beer on your floor and just use the same cap should be clean yeah 
and just put that right back on the top. Um, and the yeast is still active in there, so if it's not completely done fermenting, it might get done in the next one or two days very slowly. So, I mean, you don't really have to bottle it right away. I mean, I could bottle it tomorrow. I could, you know, wait one, two, three days. I've never gone longer than three days, so I can't really speak to how that would work. I'm sure it would probably work fine. But that's it. I mean, wrap this back around it, keep it warm. It's running about 70 degrees right now. But now I'll just clean up my bucket and my racking equipment, and that's it until we bottle.